Hi, my name is Bob Grunier, and I'm a volunteer with the Barton Fleischmann Memorial Project. And I'm here with Ryan Hopkins uh, in the presence of Carmen Miller, who's over there. Thank you, Carmen, who's invited us into this beautiful home for this wonderful session. And Ryan, if I may ask you, can you describe some of the materials that uh, Wilhelm Müller used in his Müller motor? I sure can. Uh, so we'll start with black sand. Uh, this is uh, magnetite sand. Um, with a high hematite content. So uh, this material has, has some interesting properties. And um, <clears throat> the main one that, that seems to be of interest is uh, the fact that it has zero remnants. Describe what that means. So what that means is <clears throat> the material can be mag magnetized by a permanent magnet. But when you pull the permanent magnet away, uh, there's no permanent magnetization that remains in the material. That is, it doesn't clump together like iron filings do because they, they retain some of the magnetism that's imparted to them by the magnet. No magnetic memory. Yes. And the same is true of this material, which is called... Ooh, that's shiny. It's like tinsel, very Christmassy. This is called met glass. This is uh, a, a ferromagnetic alloy that is, is produced in a very special way. And um, the result of that production process is this very thin film. And this, uh, this, this material has uh, the highest magnetic permeability of any material. Like, what do you mean by that? What I mean by that is that uh, med glass has a magnetic permeability of on the order of one million. That is the, the measure of, of how easily it can uh, Likes to conduct magnetic. magnetic field lines. Yeah. So how does that compare to like a basic ferrite core? Ferrite uh, is, is <laughs> ferrite's permeability is way, way less on, on the order of, I think, not more than an, about a thousand. What, sorry, the figures for the met glasses? On the order of a million. Okay, right. And for the black sand? Um, I'm not sure because I haven't done conclusive tests and the black sand that I have is different from this black sand. So, so there is something to be said there for, for uh, uh, better characterizing the material. But in general, both of these, I believe that... Uh, what 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 connects to what we've been uh, talking about is essentially uh, their their apparent properties of so you've got this property of its permeability, but there's yes. another very important property you've been discussing. Yes, and what is that? And that is that these materials are super paramagnetic. What does that mean? Um, with super paramagnetism, uh, you can magnetize the material. But when you pull away the, mag the magnetizing source, there is no remnant magnetization. And so how and, is that relevant for your motor, and, your father's motor? Well, it's totally amorphous, and that would mean that the magnet would then fall off of the stator coil pair. Okay, mm -hmm. and go on. And be very permeable to induce the coil with an output. Okay, so the the the... The central idea with super paramagnetic materials is that when you pull away a magnetizing source, the restoring force comes from the ambient thermal energy. Say that again. The restoring force comes from the ambient thermal energy when, when a magnetizing source Ooh, is pulled away. You know away how that floats my boat? Super paramagnetic. I, I hear Brian material. Hearn in my head with the Floyd Sweet device or the, the Manelis device. The Manelis uh, device, which apparently when it was charging batteries, this solid state device would get colder than the ambient environment. Oh, yeah. There you go. Wow. We've hopefully no, steady. Don't jump the gun. The, the, <laughs> uh, a, 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 a way to certainly a way to explain cold electricity would be with uh, if, if you happen to be using materials that are super paramagnetic, uh, then there, there should be uh, a a cooling down of the material under operation under the right conditions. This is powering a load. That's Hello. Hi there. Who, who are expert. we? I'm an expert in this field too. 
Are we Wayne? We are Wayne. <laughs> Wayne who? Wayne Ojella. Wayne Ojella. So, yes. And you just mentioned the motion uh, electromagnetic yes. generator. Yes. And it also required the same material. The Ooh. Glass material. Okay. The Tom Bearden specifications. Okay. So I think we have a little drawing down here, don't we? Of something like the yeah. motionless electromagnetic generator. Right. So here we have a situation where in one uh, environment with your equipment, mm -hmm. your father's equipment, he was uh, using this met glass, uh, magnetizing it uh, with permanent magnet, and somehow something was occurring that would appear to maybe either produce efficiency or even over unity. That is the claim. How the, could that happen? And the same material was allowed to uh, become part of a patent by Tom Bearden uh, with this same material. Now, how can that occur? Well, the properties you're of in, these you're materials... In, you're in training the ambient thermal energy into the machine. Somehow. Yeah. Uh, now, there is some work by Bogdanovich et al. here. Uh, we've looked at this a number of times before. And here he is producing ball lightning using plasma flow water discharge. And in here he produces monopole structures. And when you do these plasma discharges, these discrete discharges, you produce both north and south monopoles. They call them birdies here, or they call them uh, mushrooms in, in, the, in Russia. And when you have this mixed monopole, you see these uh, north and south monopoles coming together head to head, head to head. However, they also did experiments where they used a synchrotron and they passed synchrotron uh, accelerated electrons into some uh, targets that produced uh, gamma rays and the gamma rays were then passed and the remaining electrons through a magnet. Uh, so the electrons went out the way and then the electrons went and exposed some radiographic film. The radiographic film showed on one side north poles where which were uh, uh, um, stuck to the magnet pole, one of them, and south poles the other side. And from, from the work of Leonid Oritskiev, we know that exploding or high energy processes can produce uh, these monopoles uh, from exploding titanium foils that for two days uh, were attached to iron 57 and moved the magnetic fine moment of that uh, uh, NMR material. Now, if you can see here, if you can imagine what's happening, is the gamma ray is coming through, and according to the work by the Moscow Nuclear Physics Institute, they are saying that these monopoles are being knocked off the pole of the, this um, fixed magnet there, the permanent magnet. And you can imagine that the north poles were stuck to the south, and the south poles were stuck to the north pole of the magnet. And this is exactly compliant with the observation of Leonid Oritskiev. And so here, rather than where you get mixed poles, you have them coming head to head, like the, the head of a mushroom joining the head of the mushroom, because that's the largest pole. You only get them coming behind each other, one behind the other, because this is a north, this is north, let's say, that's south, that's south, and that's the only way they can configure. Now, how is this relevant to the Mueller motor and the motionless electromagnetic generator? Well, if we have a system where we can force aggregation of these charge clusters that are ubiquitous according to Ken shoulders in the environment onto a pole of a material which is either created through a permanent magnet in the case of your father's work mm -hmm. or, the case, uh, or by an uh, uh, electromagnetic magnet in the case of the motionless electromagnetic generator by Tom Bearden. These little magnets accrue on these kind of materials like the met glass. Mm -hmm. And then when you release the field by physically moving the neodymium magnet in the case of your father's work, or you move the electromagnetic field in the case of Tom Bearden's work, you end up releasing those magnetic monopoles that can go into the coil and do work. Mm -hmm. And that's because of this magic property of these particular materials. Your yeah. father was bang on. Well done, Carmen. Thank you. <laughs> If, 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 and thank you for your insights. I had not the you. expertise yeah. to understand these materials. If we talk about back EMF, right, as the, as the magnet is pulled away from, from a pair of the cores, the, uh, the field that, that is, is polarizing those cores will collapse. And as it collapses, 
it clap well firstly it collapses very very quickly which and gives you a good spike in it power it gives you right? a huge spike because uh, if you if you have just a coil that you're running current through and you you abruptly remove the the current source uh, the current that's still in there the field that's in there will try to go to infinity before it extinguishes and the restoring force in these materials comes from comes from the ambient thermal energy you can look it up on wikipedia ambient. on the definition of super paramagnetism <laughs> so there we go thank you very much ryan for your description of these materials thank, thank you very you. much for inviting us into your house and uh, showing us the, uh, these uh, wonderful devices and all this incredible material i have to say that I was given a special book. I won't talk about it now. I'll talk about it when I've got it out of the country. Uh, <laughs> um, so thank you very much, Carmen. Thank you very much, uh, Ryan. Ryan and Wayne. Thank you very much uh, oh, for it. That's okay. I know it's exciting, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, guys. Go on, go on. It sounds like it's a heat pump. Yeah. Yeah. Effectively, it is, yes. So basically, Effectively. heat from the environment into That's what we're going to yeah. watch next. Yeah. yeah so. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Awesome.